Raider fan. Win game tickets on CBS 47's Facebook page. Breaking news alerts, overnight news, plus weather and traffic every 10 minutes. This is CBS 47 on your side this morning. It, uh, it challenged us to do things that we have not done before. New on CBS 47 this morning, will Fresno schools go after $40 million in grant money? A marathon meeting finally comes to an end. When he denied being involved in the gang, one of these subjects proceeded to assault him. A vicious Halloween attack. Find out how the teenage victim is doing today. Progress and frustration after the storm. I'm Randall Pinkston in Stafford Township, New Jersey with the story coming up. Good morning, I'm Zara Arboleta. It is 5 a.m. on this Friday, and we're in the low 50s outside our studios. Let's take a live look at your Fresno Skyview camera. I encountered this driving in around 3 o'clock this morning, fog. So how's it looking for the rest of the valley? Jenny standing by with your first look at the forecast. Good morning. That's right. Good morning, Zara. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. I didn't get really any rain yesterday, but enough moisture in the air that we're actually dealing with a little bit of fog this morning. Usually fog season starts in November, and that's what we're starting to see. Let's take a look at our live pinpoint Doppler show you what's going on. You can actually see a little bit of that fog being picked up by our satellite from Fresno south along the 99 there down through Visalia down to Tipton. So a little bit of fog in some areas. It's rather thin though, so it should clear out pretty quickly today. But in some areas you have some patches of dense fog right now down to a quarter mile visibility in Hanford. So as you head south outside the city of Fresno, watch out for that three miles visibility in Visalia, Dinuba five in Porterville, two in Fresno and temperatures are in the Mid 40s in Hanford, Lemoore, Madera, Porterville, low 50s around Dinuba, Tulare, 50 degrees in Merced, 57 in Fresno. So temperatures will stay pretty cool throughout the morning, mid 50s to low 60s. We'll hit 65 degrees by noon and a warmer day, absolutely beautiful by the afternoon, hitting 72 degrees. We'll check out the rest of your weekend forecast in a couple of minutes. Updating breaking news from last night. The city of Fresno and the Teachers Association will go after an almost $40 million grant for schools. It took more than 12 hours of negotiating over the race to the top. Good news for Fresno schools. District and city leaders came out of their 12 hour meeting early Friday with a decision to go for it. We now have, we think, a very competitive grant. We look forward to submitting this. Up for grabs, almost $40 million for local schools. During the marathon meeting, the teachers union asked the district to change some of the wording in the 200-page application. It challenged us to do things that we have not done before. We started from the ground up and tried to build something. In the paperwork, Fresno Unified spells out its plan for the money and how it'll spend the cash over the next four years. I really just want to compliment both the district and the teachers for being willing to work. This is very hard stuff. We work through many, many details and we're proud of the work that we have done. There's a lot of work ahead of us. Well, whether we win this grant or not, we've got a lot more work to do and I think um, staying with it all the way to the end uh, means a lot to our city and our community and I'm glad that we're able to stand here tonight and announce that we've reached an agreement to pursue this going forward. Keep in mind, just because the application will get submitted later this morning, that doesn't mean Fresno has the money. Hundreds of other school districts are also applying for the funds the winner announced in December. A couple of robbers on the loose this morning after attacking a store clerk. Two men walked into Sam's Market and Gasoline near Blackstone and Clinton. They had guns, demanded cash. After the clerk handed some over, they pistol whipped him. Well, the clerk did everything that was asked of them. Um, why they resorted to more violence uh, is beyond me. Detectives are now looking at security tapes for a better description of the gunmen. South Valley investigators are still waiting for autopsy results this morning in a suspicious death. 50-year-old Helen Garcia was found in a field near Dinuba and Riggin Avenue in Visalia Tuesday. No word yet on what kind of foul play might have been involved. In Hanford this morning, investigators there checking clues in a Halloween night stabbing. Gang members apparently attacked a 17-year-old boy. Words were exchanged in regards to what his gang affiliation was. When he denied being involved in a gang, one of these subjects proceeded to assault him. The boy is recovering this morning. His friends saw him get attacked and jumped in to save him. At one point, one of the friends of the victim jumped on top of him to try and protect him, and she sustained a few injuries also. There's places I don't go after dark with my kids and that kind of thing, but, um, you know, we, we're down in this downtown area all the time. 
No arrests yet. The search is now over this morning for a hiker lost in the high country. After eight days, crews called it off. 53-year-old Larry Kahn disappeared in the Inyo National Forest. A recent storm dumped a foot of snow in the search area. New this morning, a little bit of good news for homeowners in New York and New Jersey who are starting to clean up from Sandy. The storm was not classified as a hurricane for insurance purposes, and that means people will pay lower deductibles. But now there are 90 confirmed deaths. Randall Pinkston has an update. You didn't have to look hard to find frustrated people. I'm yelling! I'm yelling! There were long lines to get gas. Sweetie, let's go! And long lines to get into New York City as police enforced a three-person per vehicle rule. We can't go into the broken bridge. Traffic will only get better when all of the tunnels and subway lines are clear of water. And the pumps are operating 24 hours a day to speed up the process. But one look at this tunnel connecting Manhattan and Brooklyn shows just how much work is still left to be done. The nights are especially hard for people without electricity. It's been cold some nights. Cold? But we Dark and cold. Con Edison says it will have power back on tomorrow for hundreds of thousands of people in Manhattan. That's good news for Elaine Brody and Mark Hans. They've been stuck in their 20th floor apartment without elevator service since the storm knocked out the power. Coming up is really a hardship yeah, for us. So that's why we you know. stayed up here. Here in New Jersey, police began allowing people who live along the coast back into their homes for the first time since the storm. For many, it was an emotional homecoming. We got upset, we lost everything here, and there's nothing we can do. This is, this is it, you know. Vicente Juarez says the water rose three feet high in his Stafford Township home. He spent the afternoon throwing away all of his goods. I didn't have much left. Damage from Sandy is estimated at $50 billion. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, Stafford Township, New Jersey. 507, not one, but three trees falling and a fire all in the span of 30 seconds. Oh New God. video from Sandy. I don't know if I can do it without him. A local connection to the big storm, a military dad from Fresno trapped on the East Coast, but he does rush home for the birth of his first baby. I'm Alexis Christophorus. Traders await the unemployment report for October, and corporate America lends a helping hand in the aftermath of Sandy. That and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch. But first, here's a very foggy look at your Fresno Skyview camera. Jenny has your pinpoint forecast next. Info